you've prepared this whole time for the NCLEX. So why would you let that anxiety get the better of you? My name is Isabella and this is my life unfiltered. I've finally fulfilled my lifelong dreams of making a YouTube channel. This is my first ever video and you may be wondering why that is. So before I took the NCLEX exam, I watched a lot of videos that have the same topic as the one I'm doing right now. And watching those videos have helped me a lot in building my confidence before taking the test. So I guess me making this as my first video on this channel is a way to pay it forward to those who are still waiting to take the test or who are just about to. First things first, a brief overview about me. I graduated from the Philippines back in 2019. I reviewed for about like six months in order to take and pass the Philippine nurse licensure examination in November 2019. I am a US resident so I had to come back here around June of 2020, I believe. I reviewed intensively for two months for the NCLEX. I took it on December 30th, 2020, and I learned that I passed the exam on January 1st, 2021. Okay, so what is the NCLEX? The NCLEX is a licensure examination that you take in order to get licensed and in order to practice nursing here in the United States. It is computer adaptive testing and we'll discuss what that means later on. As of today, January 2020, oh no, 2021, we're in 2021, oh my gosh. The NCLEX has a minimum of 75 questions to answer and 145 maximum questions. You have an allotted five hours to answer all these questions. If you've seen those videos that are how to pass the NCLEX in 60 questions, then these people probably took the exam during the peak of COVID, which was around March to October 2020. They changed the rules to 70 from 75 questions to 60 minimum questions because again, COVID. But as of today, the minimum number of questions is back to 75. Okay, real quick, what does computer adaptive testing mean? Basically, there is this line, right? This imaginary line. I don't know, it could be real, but let's just say there's an imaginary line, like a graph, or I can just edit like a line here. What computer adaptive testing is testing is if you could stay on that line of standard or if you could stay above it because if you stay below it then that's when you fail. So basically you're given a question right and that question has a certain level of difficulty. Obviously it's going to start at easy and if you do get it right you stay on that line of standard and if you get it wrong you could fall below that line of standard. Before I thought the NCLEX was about how many questions you got right in total. For example, I thought I would pass if I got 140 out of 145 questions, but no, that's not how CAT works. I hope that made sense, but for more information, you can always go to the NCSBN, NCSBN website, which I will link down below. Moving on to the study tools. The first and main tool that I use to study is UWorld. It is an online subscription review. It has a question bank of about 2,100 questions or more. And you can also get self-assessment tests, which are basically like comprehensive tests that you take. And in these self-assessment tests, UWorld assesses your chance of passing in the NCLEX. For me, UWorld is the best tool to use because the interface looks exactly like the NCLEX exam. So it kind of decreases your anxiety on what the exam is supposed to look like. It also has very straightforward rationales or explanations. And another thing that's good about UWorld is that it has graphs wherein basically it gives you progress reports on how you're doing. Ultimately, your reports are gonna come out either low, borderline, high, or very high chances of passing. And I'm here to tell you now that don't be discouraged if you get a low or borderline chance of passing. I got borderline chances of passing onto my self-assessments and I still passed in 75 questions. The UWorld assessments can make or break your confidence. It's definitely good to have a very high or high chance of passing rate because then mentally you're like, you're good for the NCLEX. I was kind of scared, but I'll tell you later on how I handled that and how I kept my self-esteem for the NCLEX up here. The second tool that I used, and these are also very important, is the Mark Klimek Audio Lectures. 
you may or you may have not heard about him he has very good lectures and the main thing that he really helped me with was the prioritization and test taking strategies i'll also link the audios down below and i think it includes the pdf and the last but not the least tool that i use for studying is this Lippincott Q&A review. Most people use Saunders, but I used Lippincott just because it was the one that was recommended to me. If you can tell, it's still kind of new and untouched. I only open this book whenever I don't want to be looking at a computer screen for hours, but it is a great book. It also has very straightforward rationales and it's good to have that read and write review thing instead of just reading off a computer and getting your eyes strained basically. On to my favorite part of this video, the study tips. The first and most important study tip, study smart, not study hard. You won't know everything. Unfortunately, you cannot cram every single topic in nursing into your brain. When you're studying, please take notes, bullet point, highlight, write down all those normal values that you're supposed to know and memorize them to your core. While I was reviewing with you world or listening to the Mark K audios, I would always have a pen and paper because I cannot study without taking notes down. This is a really good strategy wherein you write down all the normal values in one giant paper, put it right in front of you. Having those notes in front of you all the time will help you remember them even if you're not reading them and you're just looking at those notes that are in front of you i guarantee you would have a better chance of memorizing them because you're actually seeing the information the sun is setting you're losing light i'm so sorry set a number of questions per day not just 10 questions or five questions set about 100 to 150 questions per day because what you're doing there is you're building your mental endurance in taking the test because you might take all the 145 questions so might as well prepare your brain for all that. So for me, I made sure that I answered at least 100 questions per day and if my brain was feeling a little bit more active, I would do 175 questions the most because if I do more than that, then my brain would just burn out. Speaking of brain burnout, the third tip is to feed your brain. Drink a lot of water, eat some brain food or healthy food like fruits and nuts, a lot of nuts. I ate so much nuts in those two months of review than I ever did my whole life. <laughs> take some mental breaks. I don't know why I'm counting like this, but take some mental breaks. The last one is kind of optional, but it worked for me. Listen to classical music. Classical music has been statistically proven to improve brain function not function but brain activity i don't listen to it all the time but i do listen to classical music whenever i really have to focus on a topic and i really have to concentrate try it see for yourself if it doesn't help you then oh well okay last and i think the very very important study tip of all establish a strong mind body connection this study tip mainly addresses how to manage your anxiety it will be there taking the nclex will provoke some anxiety in you no matter how mentally stable you are. The NCLEX is mostly a mental battlefield. If you're gonna let that anxiety get the better of you on test day, you will not remember anything that you studied for. You will have a lower chance of actually passing. You've prepared this whole time for the NCLEX, so why would you let that anxiety get the better of you? Exercise or stretch and affirmations or manifest. You don't have to lift weights or go to the gym. What I did was I just did like 30 minute exercises. If I couldn't exercise during that day, I would do a 15 minute stretch. I do have a favorite stretch and it really works. You don't have to be like doing push-ups, just stretch and relax your body. If your body is relaxed, then your mind is in a better mental state. Next are affirmations and manifestations. These two were the most powerful tools for me. Remember, I had a borderline chance of passing in UWorld and that kind of threw me off a little bit. But whenever you're feeling discouraged or the anxiety is really rattling you inside, go to a mirror like that one. Look in the mirror and tell yourself that you can do this. You can do this, girl or boy. The last main thing is manifestation. Basically, 
I already claimed that I was gonna pass and I was gonna get my license even before taking the exam. I didn't wanna have to take this exam for another time. I wanted to leave all my anxiety in 2020 and come out as a registered nurse in 2021. Moving on to the day before the exam. Relax, eat something safe. Don't eat something that you know would upset your stomach. Don't be drinking all that milk. Don't be eating so much grease. You want your stomach to also cooperate with you on the day of the exam. Last thing that I would advise you to do is to prepare your clothes or the stuff that you need for the test the night before because you don't wanna be thinking about all of that the morning of your test or the day of your test. We've reached exam day. Two words for exam day. Tunnel vision. I like how this video has three different lighting settings. If my brain was feeling kind of tired or if I'm facing a really hard questions like those select all that apply questions. The only coping strategy that I did while taking the exam was deep breathing exercises. I'm gonna tell you now that the anxiety that you're gonna feel after the exam is gonna be 10 times more than you felt before or even during the exam because that is when you wait for your results. Now there is this thing called Pearson view trick. A lot of people use this. I personally didn't because I really wanted to know my results from the official website or the official mail, but I'll discuss it anyway. So the PVT is this trick that you do right after or like maybe an hour or two hours after you take the exam. You log on into the Pearson View website and try to register your account again. But when you get to the step where you have to purchase, you put in all the right credit card information except for the expiration date, I believe, yes. You put the wrong expiration date and basically you're gonna wait if you're gonna get a good or bad pop-up. This is what the good pop-up looks like. What that means is that you can't register anymore because the system already knew that you took the exam. So this is good, that means you passed. And this is the bad pop-up, which basically means that your registration was accepted just that you put in the wrong card information so you would have to put it again unfortunately that means you didn't pass the test if you don't want to do the pvt you can also do the quick results which is what i did you wait 48 hours after you took the test and pay seven dollars on the pearson view website so you can check your results if you prefer not to pay the seven dollars you can always wait for the official mail for about two to four weeks i think for me, it came around January 14th, so that was around two weeks. Now, for some other helpful tips, go to the venue days before the examination. Seeing what you're supposed to expect days before or weeks before could lessen your anxiety about the exam. From my friend Christine, look for absolute keywords. For example, if the question says, what is the first thing that you're supposed to do? That is different from what is the best thing that you're supposed to do. From my friend Danny, pace yourself or do something for yourself. Don't overwork your brain and if you can, reward yourself. So that was everything basically. If you're watching and you're about to take your NCLEX exam soon, good luck i wish you good fortune and i manifest that you're gonna be a registered nurse soon and if you are taking the nclex later on or years from now i hope that this video can still help you by that time let me know down in the comments if you have any video suggestions this is my first ever video on this channel i do plan on making more nursing or healthcare related videos or even throw in some fun videos here and there because how else are we gonna stay sane in this profession? If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you. And if you found this video to be helpful at all, please click the like button, share, subscribe, and stay for a while. Bye. Did I just finish filming a YouTube video?